This time last year was a crazy period in FPV because at Rampage we had the first view of these, the Dominator HD goggles by Fatshark that was paired to a then unknown digital FPV system. That week was bizarre and crazy at the same time because first of all it was you don't get to know what it actually is, then a website appeared selling a virtually identical set of goggles and the VTXs by a company called Walksnail who actually turned out to be Cadix FPV and the system wasn't based on DJI at all, even though they did try to hide this from us by labelling it as a Xilinx FPGA, that it was a chipset by a company called Artisan, and it was very similar to the DJI chipset, but not identical. Now, this system started off, frankly, very murky with regards to its origins, and whilst we've had a lot of improvements of this system over the last few months, there is still a few things about this system that are not clear, and specifically, the specification around frame rates. This system is known to use 100 frames a second maximum, however, Cadex, who have now basically admitted they are walk snail, still list the 120 frames a second spec on their website, yet these goggles are not capable of it. Today, I just want to explore a little bit more about what this 120 frames a second thing is all about, and whilst I don't have any definitive answers for you, we're going to try and come to the conclusion of if this is A, a new feature coming in the future, B, a mistake in the spec, or C, a little bit more white lies. Okay, now to start, I just want to give you a bit of background on what this actually is. If you don't know, the Avatar HD system is a digital FPV system that works very similar to DJI in the sense of it is a two-way system. Many parts of this look and feel very, very similar to DJI, and whilst the menu systems are not the same, there are many commonalities in the wording, and this was why many people thought this system might actually be based on DJI. The very simple reality in that, though, is that it wasn't based on DJI, it was designed to look and feel like it because that's generally what happens when you get companies trying to clone the product of another, especially companies in China. What they tend to do is take the market leading product and say to their team, hey, we want you to make one just like this. And they will often literally copy it even down to some of the menu system naming. And that is very much what happened here with the Avatar HD system. It is not based on the same chipset as DJI, but it is based on a similar chipset with similar similar capabilities, and that is why it is able to deliver similar levels of performance to what we see on the original DJI FPV system. Today, this system has improved dramatically, and I will be making a new video on my thoughts on this, having had it for over a year now later, but it's fair to say that it sits somewhere between the original DJI FPV system, but not quite as good as the new O3 system, but it does offer a lot of interesting capabilities. More than anything, what you have to understand is the spec of this system was very much designed to replicate the spec of DJI's, for instance, the frame rates, the capabilities, and the overall options. And it's even clear from that when you look at things like the maximum RF power output, it's exactly the same as DJI, the low latency, and all of the other specs are designed to mirror it, including things like focus mode. Now, with regards to goggles, things are quite interesting because there are two versions available. You have the Dominator HD goggle from Fatshark, and these were the first ones we saw. And then shortly afterwards, there was an Avatar HD goggle by Walksnail, who are now Cadex. What it actually turns out is that Fatshark worked with Cadex to develop these goggles, and they are being sold under both brands, but they are identical from a spec capability. Now, in the very early days when these goggles were announced, it was said that they would only support up to 90 frames a second. However, shortly after, that was changed to 100 frames a second, and that is a result of the limitations of the OLED displays that they are fitted with. Now, this is a slightly reduced spec compared to the DJI system, which does allow up to 120 frames a second because it uses LCD displays. And in fact, the V2 goggles have a refresh rate of up to 144 hertz when used with the FPV drone. However, there are no OLED goggles on the market that do allow those levels of frame rates, and even the new O3 system is limited to 100 frames a second, simply again as a result of the new goggles too using OLED displays. 
Now, what is rather interesting is if we have a look at the spec on the Cadex FPV website for this system. If we scroll down, we can see things like 1080p, 120 frames a second compatible. You can see that listed there, 1080p support, which it does have 1080p, but it doesn't have 120 frames a second. If we scroll down, there's also more talk of this as well down the bottom. You can see down here, they say supports 1080p and 720p. And if we scroll right down, you will see that there's a few more comments on this listed at the bottom with regards to what capabilities it has and it has a question saying do we support 1080p 120 frames per second it says our vtx products all support 1080p 120 frames a second and can reach 1080p 120 frames a second through firmware update is around the corner what is rather interesting on this is if we look at the specification of the avatar hd goggles themselves scrolling down and in the main spec they list it as 1080p compatible 100 hertz again though if we move over to the avatar hd vtx's and pro kit specifically they make a big point of saying supports 1080p 120 frames a second high frame rate and they say it is the first high frame rate night vision hd camera in the fpv market and they go on to talk about this as they move through the spec 1080p 120 compatibility high frame rate starlight and again all of the specs for this system keep referring to this 120 frames a second spec under the original VTX here. You can see it says 1080p 60, 720p 120, 720p 60. However, if we do look under the spec for the VRX module from Walksnail, they do show a 1080p 60 mode, a 720p 120 mode, and a 720p 60 mode, but there is no 1080p 120 mode like shown elsewhere, and this module come out long after they were advertising this spec on their VTXs. Now this is all frankly a little bit murky because at one point they're saying the goggles are 1080p 100 frames a second yet they're saying their VTXs can do 1080p 120 or 720p 120. My understanding on this having spoke to Cadex is that these goggles can only do 100 frames a second that is a hardware limitation and the information that i was given is that will not change it would require a hardware upgrade to be able to use the 120 frames a second i.e a new set of goggles things are not clear with regards to the vrx module whether they could output 120 frames a second they don't have the limitation of the refresh rate of the displays and in theory the vrx module could be able to do it However, they are being clear in saying that their cameras and VTXs are capable of 120 frames a second transmission. Now this in my opinion is all a little bit murky because what we have here is a set of goggles that can only do 100 frames a second yet you're selling an accessory for them that can do 120 frames a second. Really this is a bit like selling a car with tyres that can do 160 but limiting the car to 120 miles an hour but saying it's capable of 100. 160. Cadex, in my opinion, need to be a lot clearer in what they are telling customers this system is capable of doing. If there is going to be a future update for 120 frames a second, we need that put out there labeling exactly what that will mean. Will the goggles do it? Will the VRX do it? And if they won't, will it mean users will need to buy new hardware in the future? Selling these VTXs with this 120 frames a second number is simply marketing nonsense right now because the system is not using it and it is simply deceiving people into believing the system is the same as DJI when it isn't. There is no issues with this system being only 100 frames a second. There is no complaints with that. The latency numbers are fine. It is simply a number on a piece of paper to make it look as good as something else and that isn't even relevant today when the DJI O3 system is only 100 frames a second as well. So really, in the end, we have cameras being sold as the fastest in the industry, 120 frames a second with low light, yet the system isn't using it, VTXs with specs that the goggles can't use, and everything just feels very unclear. Although, in the end, I guess it's really the same situation as it was this time last year, and that is, you don't get to know, but hopefully Cadex will clear this up in the future. Now, I am really interested in knowing what you think about this. Please do let me know in the comment section. Do you think this is wrong? 
Do you think it's lies? Do you think it's just a mistake? I'm really interested in hearing your thoughts. Furthermore, if you would like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Please do give the video a like and check out the links to my Patreon in the description. We were not sent these goggles to review by Fat Shark, Cadex or anyone else. I bought these with the support of the patrons on my channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making independent content like this in the future, please do consider checking those links out. I want to say a massive thank you from me to all of my patrons as well. I would not be able to do this without your support support and if you're interested in supporting us moving forward the links are there if you want to use them anyway that's it from me on this one please stay safe let me know what you think in the comment section and i will speak to you soon